Hello and welcome back to what should be the last installment of the boat rebuild series. Um, we are now ready to focus on this outboard motor. Um, that's probably going to be three parts. Um, we're going to do the steering cable. We're going to connect the throttle cables. And then the last step will be getting it to actually fire up and run for us. Um, so we're going to get started on that today. I'm going to start with the steering cable. We're going to see if we can get it sorted out and installed where it needs to go. All right, so I have it just laid out here. This steering cable has this really long piston type thing that actually slides into the frame of the outboard and it connects to this arm and then as it moves back and forth it rotates your outboard so that's gonna that end of this is going to connect to the end of that rod that's in the front of the outboard these all have technical correct terms that I'm not using but you know what I mean that arm connects there connects to the end of that so then the steering cable is going to be routed underneath our nice panel up under the console and then this actually has like a thread to it for lack of a better term this gets fed into the mechanism that is under the steering wheel or that is attached to the steering wheel this housing it gets threaded through there so i'm going to do that and i'll show you what that looks like and we'll see if we can get it set up properly to actually turn that outboard all right so we're here under the steering wheel and there's this housing that it attaches to i took this threaded end and started it in this bottom hole here and then what you can do is you turn the steering wheel and it actually pulls it through and it goes through in the housing around here and it's going to come out the top so you're going to pull that all the way in and then you're going to have to just make sure this doesn't interfere with anything you got going on here okay there we go Okay, so after you get this threaded all the way through and you turn the wheel as far as it will go, so it really feels like it's pulled this side in, then you can slide this cover over this exposed part and this fits in on this side of the top as well. And then you have these bolts push through and they actually fit through a gap that pins both sides of this in there. there go and then you can put a nut on each one of the back of those to lock them in. Alright, so here is our steering cable coming back from the console and it's going to of course be underneath this panel once it's installed for good. This panel is not anchored yet so I can just cover it up but I want to make sure I get a, a good line back here and a good fit before I do anything permanent. So what we're going to do next is take our marine grease and we're going to grease up this channel where the steering rod goes in. 
It's going to come out the other side and then it's going to attach to this steering arm. This end of the steering rod is actually going to attach to that steering arm. And like I said, we'll grease up the whole thing with marine grease. And then uh, we should be able to get some turning on the motor. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I slid the steering cable into this slot here on the outboard. And the other side of the steering cable connects to that steering arm. Right here, there's just the nut on the bottom of that. And now back up at the wheel, if we turn our steering wheel, now we are steering the motor. And then I ran the cable underneath our carpeted piece here. This is starting to fit a little awkward because it's just, you know, there's additional cables under here, but when it's screwed down, it'll fit nice and tight. There's, there's still enough room under there. It's just kind of fitting awkwardly right now, but there should be enough room for the throttle cables to go under here as well. And then we'll be able to actually screw it down. All right, now that we have the steering cable connected, the next step is to connect our new throttle cables. This side connects to the throttle control up front here. One is actually shifting from neutral forward in reverse, and the other actually will control the throttle, you know, how fast you're going in forward or reverse. So I'm going to run these along the side under our panel and then to the motor and then I'll show you how I'm connecting them to the throttle control and inside the outboard. Now the shifter is going to be mounted right in this general area and I do want those cables to actually get routed through this pre-drilled hole in that aluminum piece and come back through this channel right here. So I am gonna have to guide them through that first because I'm not gonna be able to do it once I connect the ends to the actual controls. So I'm gonna actually get those in place and thread them through first. All right, I've got those routed through and they're coming out this hole right here. So now we can connect them to our controls. All right, we're gonna connect the cables to the throttle control first. That way we'll be able to tell which cable should go to the actual shifter for neutral, forward, and reverse, and then the actual throttle control. And you can tell that when you open this up, you can see which one moves, you know, when you change gears or when you change throttle. So first thing is to take out these couple screws and expose underneath here. The throttle cables come in through the back and then you can actually see the mechanisms where they attach once we get this panel off. All right, so here are the two points that your throttle cables connect to. And if I push this out of neutral into forward, I can see that front one is the one that moved. Same thing if I change gears to reverse. So that is actually going to be where the shifting cable is attached. And then if you'll notice, the second one moves when I adjust the power of the throttle. So that one, again, in reverse. There's that other one that moves. So you can see the difference between the two. So we're gonna get these both connected and then we'll be able to tell which way, you know, which part they go in on the motor. All right, so the first step is to take these nuts off of here and these two end parts are where your cables attach. 
So you have to take this nut off to get that bracket loose. This bracket comes off. Then we can thread our cable. This round plastic piece on the cable actually fits. I promise it fits into the bottom of the control assembly here. And then the end of your cable lines up with the hole at the bottom. And then you use your bracket to sandwich it on there. So I'm gonna move this around a little bit so that it lines up. All right, tighten the nut down. So what you should have is your cable coming in, this round piece in the slot, and then the opening from the cable sandwiched between the bracket here, and then you got your nut back on there. So when you shift, you're moving your cable like that. So that's the actual shifter. Now we'll attach the throttle. And the cables are identical. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're both the same. It just depends on where they connect here. And that's going to determine where they connect in the outboard. Okay, same thing. This cable is going to line up on this round opening where the round piece fits into the slot, and then it's going to get sandwiched in the bracket and put your nut back on. So now I can go into forward and then throttle forward, moving my cables. Now putting this plate back on is a little tricky because this round opening has to line up with the round knob on that cable. So you do sort of have to play with it a little bit and get it, make sure that's in the right place and make sure this goes on in the right place. Okay, give that a quick little inspection. That looks pretty good. Let's try it out. See my cables moving. Beautiful. All right, let's move on back to the outboard. All right, here at the motor, we've got the other ends of our two cables. Now, these are ordered big on purpose to allow for enough slack for the motor to move because they're gonna get pulled as the motor turns. So they say to order three to four feet of extra when you do your measurements and then you kind of put a loop in them at the end. So they're gonna be routed through this opening in the front of the outboard. And there's actually a clip here that they go in. So you have to open this and then there's actually slots just like in that throttle control where those two circles go. So those two pieces, those two circles fit right in here and then those cables attach on this side. One of them attaches right there. That's your throttle, the one that's moving there. And the other one attaches a little bit below it. There's a little cover on this and that is your shifter. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get both of those connected and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, now don't forget, we want to make sure we attach these to the right places. So I'm going to go back up to the controls and I'm going to shift it into forward and see which one of these cables moves. And then I'll know that I have to attach that one down here to the shifter. All right, this is the one I want. So I'm going to thread it through this hole here. Pull this plastic housing out that this plastic circle is going to go in. Just hold it here for now. Actually, I can just leave this aside for now. And this shifter is going to go to the bottom because that's where it attaches. So I'm going to put it on first. You can also adjust where this round piece is on the threads. So like I needed a little less on this cable. So I just adjusted that a little bit and it looks like it's going to need to adjust it a little bit more. So once you have the distance of each one set to where it needs to attach, you can line up these and put this piece on here and that'll keep them in the same place and then that slides into this slot here all right so here's a close-up of what it looks like put together we've got our cables coming in here this clamp is holding them down into that round plastic piece Then the throttle is coming up to here. And then the shifter is directly below it. I'll show you what they look like in action. All right, we're currently in neutral. We'll shift it to forward. Then we'll give it some throttle. Give it some gas. There we go. Wide open throttle. Back it off a bit. All right, back to idle. And back to neutral. Reverse. And some throttle in reverse. Back to neutral. All right, so now that the throttle cables are attached to our control assembly here, the only other thing that needs attached is this big thick wire. And this actually runs, I already ran it underneath our panel. And on the end of this are the pins. This Mercury one I believe has eight. And then there's a couple of connectors here that control the trim. So we're gonna go ahead and run this into the outboard and connect it where it goes. It's actually pretty obvious where it goes because it accepts all these pins. But I'm gonna get that plugged in and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here you can see how I threaded this cable through the opening in the outboard and it plugs into the female end here that's attached to the motor. There's the pins. And then there is a green and a blue wire that connect to the outboard. And these are what control your trim up and down. So all of this just gets tucked down in here. My outboard does not use this brown wire. So I'm probably just going to tape these back out of the way. So I'll get this all tucked back in and then we'll connect the outboard to our starting battery. And then we'll test the trim, see if it works. All right, we're back here at the throttle and this button here on the handle actually controls tilt and trim. So let's test it out. We'll go up and down. Okay. Very good, it's working.
One part I didn't mention yet were these wires that come off of this throttle assembly and these operate any gauges you might have in the dashboard. Now, because we have a fairly simple setup here, I don't have any gauges, so these aren't gonna be connected to anything right now. So I'm probably gonna tuck this back behind the panel just to keep it out of the way. Um, you know, I, I may um, use some zip ties and just keep that, like I said, just out of the way. But that's what that's for. We're just not gonna be using it for this build because I'm not gonna mess with any of the gauges. So now we're probably at a good spot where we can actually connect this piece that holds the throttle and then get the throttle connected and then get our trim piece here actually secured to the boat. And then we can go ahead and run some zip ties and get that cleaned up and out of the way. Uh, and then I guess the last part will be to get some oil and fuel mixture in there, prime the motor and see if she fires up. So first up, let's just get this stuff attached and cleaned up. We'll go from there. All right, here's our rail, all secure. And I have this piece secured here as well. I made sure this was nice and level. So then the next step here, is we're gonna take this throttle control and there's a little like a spacer backing right here and three bolts. And we're going to line this up here where we want it and drill some holes. And then we'll reach behind here uh, and put on some washers and bolts or sorry, washers and nuts on the back of these bolts to secure that. I may need to trim these bolts down a bit. Um, I don't know if I have that much clearing at the bottom here. So one of these bolts might have to be trimmed up because I, I don't know if they're all going to fit. So we'll take a look at that. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, we've got our throttle controls mounted. This little bit of extra cable here, I guess this is the wire that goes back to the motor. Um, I just tucked it in for now. There's a little bit of extra here because it's a little long. Um, I'll probably secure that better with a zip tie and, and keep it up under there, but that's not gonna hurt anything. And then we have everything running through our cable to the back of the motor. And this is all nice and secure. All right, today's the day. We got the boat outside. Got the fuel and oil mixture in the tank connected to our fuel line. So I'm gonna have to give that a little bit of a prime. We've got the outboard hopefully ready to go, connected to the battery. And we've got the throttle controls and the ignition and everything connected up front. I have my muffs connected to my hose, so all I gotta do is turn the water on to hopefully see that uh, impeller cool it and spray out the back. And I think we're ready to start it up and see what happens.
Heck yeah. She started right up. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, now maybe we'll get brave and see if we can put it into gear and see if the prop actually spins and the throttle works. Say we have success. <laughs> I probably shouldn't act incredibly surprised, but I gotta say I'm definitely surprised that it started up so easily. It's been sitting for over a year. But I think that worked really well. It idles really fast, which I'll have to see what that's like in the water. I don't know if maybe it's too fast, but initial, impression, initial impressions are pretty good. That's awesome. All right, so we're back in the garage today following a very successful motor test. She fired right up on the first crank. I was super excited about that. Uh, but it's been in the garage for a few days now and I was actually going to trim it up to put on a transom saver and get ready to drive it to the lake. And I realized that my tilt and trim stopped working. Um, I was able to trim the motor up and down before and now I got nothing. So I pulled these relays out of the back here. There's one for up and one for down that control the tilt and, or the, I guess it's the trim. And here is the original that was in there. I think this is a 40 amp relay with this five pin connector here. So I went ahead and purchased some replacements. I think these are the same, they're 40 amp. These actually have little fancy LED lights on them. So I'm going to install the new ones here, which really just involves plugging them in. And then we're going to give it another shot. All right, so here's one plugged in. Here's what the other one looks like. It actually comes with this housing and then this metal bracket that attaches to the actual outboard to hold it in place. So you got the pins here, all you got to do is plug it in. And I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have an LED now or if it only is going to light up when it's actually trimming up and down. But let's go try it out. All right, up at the trim switch. Hey, look at that. Trimming up and trimming down. Beautiful. All right, so I'm assuming one or both of those relays got fried maybe. I don't know if that's super common, but maybe something wasn't quite right and me working it kind of hard on that day I had tested it 
blew something. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's something that could have happened that I overlooked, or maybe that's just something that happens every once in a while. Hopefully these don't go bad that quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back where they go. If you take a look down here, these bolts come out of these slots and that bracket lines up and then the bolt goes in to hold it in place. So I'm going to get those installed and then we can actually put our transom saver on here and get this motor jacked up and ready for the road. All right, and there we go. Got both of them secured in there. Just make sure it's still working. Oh, beautiful. Okay, let's trim this up and get this transom saver on and secure the motor. All right, so I purchased this transom saver. This basically fits between your outboard and your trailer to make sure that there's no flexing on the transom, hence transom saver. So off camera, I actually already installed this bracket. My light literally just died. Off camera, I installed this bracket here with this little cotter pin. And you can take that cotter pin out and that's where the transom saver actually connects to the trailer. So we'll go ahead and do that. Trim my motor up out of the way. This fits about there, and then cotter pin goes in on this side. Now, when your outboard does not have a trim switch on the side, this model just didn't come with one. You can install one right there, but since it doesn't, this is sort of a difficult maneuver to do. So I'm propping up my transom saver in the right place, and then we're going to slowly, let's make sure this motor's straight, and we're going to slowly back it down. To where we want it. All right, there we go. Keep her nice and secure down the highway. And then, of course, you do your little bungee strap around the back just to keep it from bouncing out of that holder. A couple little finishing touches here. Safety first, got your fire extinguisher mounted under there. And the first actual fishing that's made it onto the boat. We got our rod holder here. But the rod goes back into there. Rod tip goes in the holder. Your reels can line up in there and they're covered by the hatch. Not super important, but it's nice to finally get some aspect of fishing involved in this fishing boat. Made me excited. There she is, dare I say, ready for her maiden voyage. I think we're ready to try her out on the water. Pretty much everything is done and ready to go.
Right now I have the batteries plugged in and charging. I added a strap here to hold the gas tank in place. I double checked our tie downs here because it's been a while since this thing's been on the road. Check the tire pressure. I didn't show you yet the uh, wires tied up and out of the way, but I just kind of zip tied them up so that they're not in a complete bird's nest back there. And I think we're finally ready. I'm pretty nervous. Not entirely sure what to expect. I don't know how she's going to ride. I don't know if she's going to get on plane. I hope 40 horsepower should be plenty to do that, but hopefully she's weighted properly and uh, we don't have any major issues. So I'm of course going to take the GoPro out with me and film the first voyage. We'll do a little fishing if all goes well. Hopefully we'll catch our first fish out of the restored boat. So thanks for joining me as always, and uh, the next episode you'll see after this should be the maiden voyage. Thanks guys, catch you in the next one.